Hi everybody, welcome back. Today, I'm going to talk about coming out. Coming out of the psychedelic closet. This subject amuses me for a variety of reasons. One, it's because I like to picture what that closet would look like. I think it's actually a cool concept for a painting, but I haven't developed that yet, so we'll just have to picture it with our minds at this point. So what this actually means is getting up and speaking openly in public about psychedelics, psychedelic use personal psychedelic use. So, for those of you who know me well or are familiar with my art, you probably know that I'm not really in the psychedelic closet. My artwork tells the story pretty clearly. Very frequently I come, come, have people come up to me, look at my artwork and say, Whoa, man. <laughs> or LSD? DMT? Something along those lines. It's pretty easy to tell that the work that I make is, is psychedelically inspired to a certain point. And this is true. However, it's not specifically about psychedelics. It's more about the patterns that my experiences with psychedelics help me to observe. Once I became aware of those patterns, I realized that they're not just about visual hallucinations. They're actually about the fundamental geometric structure of life. The thing that happens on certain psychedelics is you're able to actually view these patterns, to see them with your eyes, or with your third eye, depending on the situation. So, this is really interesting. that you can suddenly observe the underlying geometric structure of life itself. That which before was invisible to the naked eye. So it begs the question, is it now happening that you have developed a special sight? That you're able to see things that you couldn't see before that are always existing in that place, in that way? Or is it happening that you are manifesting those visions, those hallucinations, simply inside of your mind? Now, it's very different, very difficult to make this distinction because everything that we perceive is filtered through our own antennas, our senses. But the way to look at this objectively is to have these things be seen by many different eyes. And this, I believe, is one of the main goals of visionary art it is to bring back the story of your journey. To bring back your story of your journey and to share your notes. Because when you share your notes, other people can look at them and they can say, I've seen that. I've been there. And the suggestion that that makes is really powerful, which is that it is something that is 
not simply created in our minds by a hallucination. This is very interesting to consider. Many people who are interested in psychedelics are very comfortable with the idea that there are many different realms, many different dimensions existing simultaneously, even in the same place. Many different levels of dimensions that you can see with different types of perception. And science is coming around to this idea as well. And mystical, mystical traditions have been exploring this for thousands of years. And I believe that it is a tragedy that entheogens, psychedelics, visionary plant medicines have been vilified, cast out from society. In fact, I believe it is part of the reason why we've become so disconnected from the spirit that moves within all things, from the life force. And it's not about worshipping these substances by any means. It's about the experiences, the vision that you can have by using them as tools. Visionary tools. Healing tools. For me, it has been, my exploration of these things has been incredibly healing, incredibly insightful, fascinating, adventurous ride. But I'll tell you the first thing that happened. The first time I ever took any visionary substance, it was magic mushrooms. And my conventional knowledge at that time, among high schoolers, <laughs> was that you had to take at least three and a half grams of mushrooms, psilocybin mushrooms, in order to have any interesting experience with this substance. Now, if you're familiar with them, you know that that's kind of a lot. And it, it speaks to the high school mind, I suppose, because we're always trying to get an intensity of experience, you know. Going out and getting really drunk or really high or tripping <laughs> really hard or just doing things that are intense. I was always thrill-seeking. I was like, a compulsive thrill seeker in high school, jumping down scare stairs on my skateboard and doing backflips off of cars and all kinds of fun, dangerous things like that. But anyways, we believe that you had to take 3.5 grams whenever you took mushrooms, otherwise it wasn't worth it. I can tell you now that that is absolutely not true. In fact, micro or mini dosing on psilocybin is becoming more and more accepted in mainstream society for its value. And it, it can be, it can give you kind of like the reverent beauty, the experience of reverent beauty without the like, the sort of freak out, lose your mind a little bit kind of experience of, <laughs> of a higher dose. So anyways, I wanted to talk about the lesson of this experience because we had we had a wild time in the woods and it was it was me and some friends from high school walking around in some woods that we knew really well but seeing them completely differently having a very magical and mystical experience of exploring the forest and a couple things that I saw was one that's very clear with, with this substance is that you see the, the essence of things. You see the glowing life that is moving within, especially nature. You see it in the trees and the, the plants of the forest. They're 
glowing life force. So we observed all that and then eventually it, it started to get dark and it was the winter time in Wisconsin. So we were in the forest, it was getting, it got completely dark and we were still tripping, like nobody was, nobody was going to drive <laughs> for a while. So we basically, we couldn't leave and we were just getting colder and colder and it was getting darker and darker and that was when this, the trip started to get really kind of frightening because it's, it can be very difficult if you if you come to a place of, of stuckness where you don't know which way to proceed in your inner visionary experience. That can that's when people come across experiences like a bad trip. Because what what had happened in this in this instance was my friend gave his car keys to our other friend who left for a while. And <laughs> we were like, you take these car keys, we can't be trusted with them. And then we forgot that we had done that. So once it got cold and once it got dark, he realized that he didn't know where his keys were. And we were just there, stranded in the Wisconsin wintertime. <laughs> so that felt pretty heavy for a while. And we actually got to the point where we decided that we had to break the window of his car. Because he had an extra key inside of his car. <laughs> so, we, we made that decision and we went for it. And we didn't break one of the big windows, we had the, like the little back triangle window. <laughs> and we smashed it and reached inside reached inside, opened the door, and got, got his extra key out, and then we were all able to, like, sit in the car and be warm. <laughs> and then, like, 15, 20 minutes later, my friend drives up with our keys. He's <laughs> like, hey, guys, how's it going? Like, did you, <laughs> are you having fun? And we were like, oh, wow, we bet. We've gone too far over the deep end. <laughs> so that was kind of funny, but not the point of my story. The point of my story is that aside from that like deep nature appreciation that I got from that experience, seeing nature with new eyes, I also, after that, went home and was still living at my parents' house and saw my little brother. He was 12 years old or something like that. And just, you know, I was, I'm his older brother. He, he looked up to me. Maybe he still does. <laughs> and he, he was just kind of come. he came downstairs and was just kind of talking to me interacting with me and I was still tripping but and not not so much that I felt freaked out by the situation but just that I felt this like deep benevolent caring and love for my younger brother and saw how mean that was to him saw how like the way that I was treating him was totally inappropriate and unfair and I immediately I immediately stopped and changed course with that basically made the decision that I need to be kind to people everybody especially my siblings but to everybody who I come into contact with. And that is a lesson that has stuck with me ever since then, and that has really positively transformed my life. Now, I wouldn't say that I'm 
100% consistent that I'm fully able to do this at all times. But it is most definitely the policy that I've adopted and that has brought incredible gifts to me, to my experience of this life. Because when you go through life being kind to people, things open up to you. A lot of things become a lot easier when you move through life with that kind, open heart. So this is the beginning of my psychedelic storytelling. I feel compelled to share these stories of my experiences because what's the point in taking a journey, an adventure? If you don't come back and tell the tale. So thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.